I've never said we want to review on fracking. What I have said is we want to make sure that we're always reviewing how well we're doing things to make sure we're doing it as well as we possibly can and find ways to do it better. But this idea, the NDP idea is they want to review fracking uh, because they might stop it. And I have never said that uh, we want to go out and do a review with a view to find out whether or not we should be doing it at all. I know we do it well. They're talking about fracking, otherwise known as hydraulic fracturing. It's a method used to produce natural gas that's decades old. It's amazing how this election has turned into a bit of an energy election. First, they were talking about the oil sands pipeline, Northern Gateway. Then the old pipeline called the Trans Mountain. Now, natural gas. It's amazing. Joining me now from Vancouver. Oh, it's so beautiful out there today. It's Elise Mills. Elise, I wish I was out there. In fact, I'll be out there on Election Day. Now, it's amazing to me, as an Alberta boy in exile here in Toronto, how energy policy politics have dominated the campaign so far. Are you surprised? Oh, I'm not surprised. It's BC. I think we were all very ready to hear uh, the the banging of the drums from the left and their environmentalists. Um, I think, though, what's starting to come out now, though, is voters are starting to realize that energy is actually an economic issue, and an economic issue is actually a social issue because that's how we pay for those really nice things called health care and education out here. So I think the Premier's done a good job separating uh, truth from fiction on that. But, uh, but yeah, it's all about about fracking, it's all <laughs> about pipelines, it's all about tankers, and it's all about closing ports or keeping them open. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I, I thought it was terrifying when Adrian Dix, the NDP candidate, who I am still afraid has the momentum here, uh, has said basically he doesn't want the port to export oil. It's been exporting oil for more than 50 years. But there's a new poll out there that I think gives credit to what you're saying, that maybe people are saying, whoa, Adrian Dix is saying no to a few too many industries, and we probably need some folks actually working because we can't all be downtown eco-activist professors. Let me show you a new poll that came out just yesterday. It's an abacus poll that puts the NDP in first place at 39, but the Liberals have really closed the gap to 35%. And what's interesting to me is the Greens, a solid 12%, and the Conservatives in single digits at 9%. Why that's interesting is to show the gap is closing and the Conservatives aren't splitting the vote as much as they were even a few months ago. And look at this. In terms of who's the strongest on the economy, at least I think this goes to your point, the Liberals are ahead strongly on this file and the Greens and the Conservatives aren't even on the map. Do you think that there's time to close this gap in the remaining days of this election? Do you think Christy Clark has the momentum, or is it still a long time to go to Election Day on May 14th? Well, I don't think it's just about Christy closing the gap. It, it appears to me that all hands are on deck. Uh, Liberals and Conservatives rallying around the Premier and the B.C. Liberals uh, to get the job done. What I find interesting is her tone has changed as well. In an ironic twist of fate, she's sounding a whole lot like Obama uh, with a yes, we can approach, yes to fracking, yes to energy, yes to agriculture. And it's a it's a stark contrast with the NDP who have said a lot of no. Um, and I think voters are, 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 are coming back. I mean, I think the polls that we saw earlier earlier were probably uh, voters just wanting to get it off their chest that they were sort of ticked off with the BC Liberals. Uh, but as we're inching closer, we're now then less than two weeks away, the reality of their vote is setting in. Can they trust the NDP to run this province the way it needs to be run? And I don't think it's lost on voters, Ezra, that BC for the first time ever withstood uh, a massive recession. Normally we are either the first in it or fall into it. Um, and BC was largely unaffected by it and that's not lost on voters out here you know what's interesting as we were talking I was looking at pictures of uh, uh, Christy Clark meeting guys in hard hats wearing safety gear and it, it just reminded me of what I've thought before which is the NDP have sort of abandoned guys who work outside guys who dig in the ground guys yes. who drive trucks who work in ports who drop down trees that used to be the NDP's turf and here we see a city downtown woman who is with the Liberal Party taking that traditional blue-collar working guys place but but maybe there's votes maybe there's votes there maybe British Columbians say you know someone's got to do the work I think that's interesting do you think she's eating away at that blue-collar yeah. vote 
Well, I think it, well, originally that was what we would call a social credit vote. And when the SoCreds uh, went away, vanished off the landscape, the NDP got them by de facto through the unions. Um, and I, what I'm hearing from uh, the blue collar, blue collar workers, uh, even some union members, they're not pleased with Adrian Dix's stance uh, on Kinder Morgan and other pipelines because it's a huge job loss for them. And you know what I found ironic, and I'm glad the voters are picking up on this too because we're, we're hearing this as well in comments, uh, that if Adrian Dix is concerned about child poverty, he should be worried about parent poverty. And the best solution to that are jobs. And that's what some of those blue collar people are talking about. Uh, the, the, you know, it's not just workers, it's all, there's their bosses. For the first time ever, they're coming together in the discussion of what those jobs will mean for British Columbia. And I think Dix has actually put himself into a corner on this. He's saying no to good union jobs and yes to the other stream of his party, which is the hardcore environmentalists. Hmm. Elise, thanks for your time. We got to run. We'll see you soon out there in Vancouver. Thank you.